I'm personally very, very excited about the future of technology. And no matter what technology trends are taking shape, the backbone of those trends are semiconductors, the hardware that powers all types of technologies, whether that be the internet, whether it's AI, internet of things, smart devices, clean energy, all of these things need semiconductors. And as time goes on, semiconductors are getting smaller and smaller, which means that they're getting more and more advanced. And I believe Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company is the best way to play the growth of semiconductors. Let me explain. Taiwan Semiconductor is the world's largest dedicated contract chip manufacturer, otherwise known as a fab or a foundry. They have a mid 60% market share as of 2024. When we look at the top 10 semiconductor foundries, we can see that TSMC dwarfs all of their competitors, such as Samsung and Global Foundries, which was spun off from AMD. So what does a semiconductor foundry or fab do and why is it so important? Well, when you think about some of the biggest semiconductor companies in the world, maybe Nvidia, AMD, Broadcom, Qualcomm, they don't actually have their own factories to make semiconductor chips. Interestingly enough, these companies are fabless companies, meaning they simply design and innovate new semiconductor chips, and then they outsource the development to companies like TSMC. So these companies, without a fab, would have no way to actually build their products. That's why they rely so heavily on Taiwan Semiconductor and other companies. For example, NVIDIA is TSMC's second largest customer, and without TSMC, we likely would not have the AI revolution that's taking place right now. Intel has their own foundry. They're what's known as an IDM, or an integrated device manufacturer, where they design and manufacture chips, but a lot of these other names are also completely fabless. So we're starting to see this revolution in the semiconductor industry where semiconductor companies have said, hold on, we really don't need to be making our own chips because somebody else can do it much more efficiently. If we focus on just developing the chips, we can have much stronger profit margins, we can be more nimble, and we can have better growth. TSMC, on the other hand, said, wow, this is great. We can focus on just making the chips. We don't have to do any of the hard work for R&D. We just have to shell out some money for some expensive equipment every few years as the technology improves. And we can also make pretty great profit margins. So this move to a fabless model where one company designs the chips, another company makes the chips, is really taking off and it seems to be a win-win for both parties. According to Morningstar, they say the rise of fabless semiconductor firms, like Nvidia, like we talked about, has been maintaining the growth of foundries, which has in turn encouraged increased competition. However, most of these newer competitors are confined to low-end manufacturing due to prohibitive costs and engineering know-how associated with the leading edge technology. So this sounds a lot like a moat. Taiwan Semiconductor being the largest, right, semiconductor fab means they already have their hands on all this expensive equipment and they are already making the money that they need to maintain and upgrade this expensive equipment. Let me show you what I mean. This is a breakdown of Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company's capital expenditures over time. Now, if you are, have been around the channel for a while, you know I made a video on the semiconductor manufacturing equipment companies, things like ASML, LAM Research, Applied Materials. Those are the companies that actually build the machines that they sell to fabs in order to make semiconductors, right? It's kind of a complex web here. So that's what Taiwan Semiconductor is spending a lot of money on, and we can see that their capital expenditures have been going up and up over time. Other players in the space don't have the money to spend this much on semiconductor manufacturing equipment, and that's what's helping TSMC build this wonderful moat. And it's one thing if they're spending money and not really seeing a return, but they are seeing a return. Here's their free cash flow over time, and you can see this chart strongly correlates to their capital expenditures chart. So the more money that they're putting into the business, the more free cash flow that they're generating. They're seeing great economies of scale. It's a very lucrative business. And Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, aside from just their large size, has very good relationships with both the fabless semiconductor companies like NVIDIA and the equipment manufacturers like ASML. Think about it. ASML is a pure monopoly in extreme ultraviolet lithography machines. These are a crucial step in the semiconductor manufacturing process. Realistically, ASML could charge whatever they want. They could jack up their prices. They could have 80% profit margins, but they don't. They have gross margins in the 50s, and Taiwan Semiconductor has gross margins in the 50s. These two companies have a bit of an understanding that neither is going to gouge the other. TSMC is going to continue to be a loyal customer of ASML as long as ASML retains reasonable margins, and they both benefit. So there's a lot going on with TSMC. They're very deeply embedded in the semiconductor industry, and that's why today they're a 650 50 billion dollar company. However, despite being such a large company, the stock looks, I would dare say, cheap. Now you can't just focus on short-term performance, but in the past six months, TSM stock is down about 27%. 
being hit by the broader downturn in both the semiconductor and AI space and just the general market based on tariff concerns. There are a lot of company-specific concerns as well with a Taiwanese company. This company makes up nearly half of the Taiwanese stock market, and the Taiwanese government is the largest individual shareholder of this company. If anything were to happen geopolitically with Taiwan, say China invades, I know it might not happen, but it's something that you maybe want to plan for, that could be a big detriment to TSMC. However, at the end of the day, every individual company has a bit of risk, and risks are going to vary from company to company. But I just thought I would mention that because it's something that I hear people cite a lot for this company. So, like I said, it's down 27% in the past six months. That doesn't automatically make it cheap, that is such a short time frame. But when we look at other metrics of Taiwan Semiconductor, we can see that it actually looks pretty good. So let's go over to my growth stock spreadsheet. This is where I rate growth stocks on four factors, and those are gross margins, total annualized revenues, price to annualized sales, and annual revenue growth. I think that these four factors combined paint a good picture of evaluation for a company and whether it might make a good investment on a very surface level. So Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company is one of the highest scoring stocks in my spreadsheet. And I think that's because a lot of the geopolitical risks are baked into the stock. I think if it weren't for geopolitical risks, this would be a much, much more expensive stock. And as always, this is not a recommendation to buy TSMC or to do anything with TSMC. These are simply my thoughts. So TSMC has annualized revenue of over $115 billion US dollars. That is absurd. This is a very huge company that makes a lot of money. They have gross margins around 60%, so that means for each dollar of revenue, it only costs them about 40 cents to get that dollar of revenue. Of course, they still have to pay other expenses, and that's where we need to look at their net profit margins, but we can see that those net profit margins are also very strong at over 40%. So, very profitable company no matter how you look at it. Their balance sheet is decent. They have debt to equity of only 24%. This is their long-term liabilities divided by their total shareholders value. We can look at their balance sheet in their recent annual filing, and we can see that they have current assets. These are things that can be turned into cash within the year that are greater than their total liabilities. So this is a great balance sheet. This company, despite being a very capital intensive company where they're constantly having to buy new equipment and service that equipment and make sure that they're up to date with the latest technology advances, they still have more current assets, things like me turn into cash less than a year than their total liabilities. That's awesome. I love to see that. Their valuation on a price to annualized sales basis is on the lower end at 5.9 times annualized sales, which is quite reasonable, if not cheap, given that they're growing at 34% year over year. They also have a lowish PE ratio below 20 and price to free cash flow also below 20. So profitable company, cheaply valued, growing in the solid double digits, really clean balance sheet. It kind of makes you wonder why is this stock so cheap? And naturally, you shouldn't just dive headfirst into something that looks good financially. It's always important to consider the risks around any investment. And I do believe that TSMC bears a lot of different risks. Like I said, we have geopolitical risks, but we also have key customer risks. So this is their annual filing, and they talk a lot about the risks of having a couple significant customers that account for a lot of revenue. So they say their 10 largest customers in 2024 accounted for about 76% of their revenue. So 10 customers making up three quarters of their revenue, that's significant. It's not a huge deal breaker, but it is a risk to be concerned about. They also say their largest customer accounted for about 22% of their revenue in 2024. We know this to be Apple. So Apple has their own specialized chips and they rely on TSMC to develop those chips. So if there were ever a slowdown in the smartphone market, or if Apple was ever to fall from grace and be replaced by Samsung or Google as the dominant cell phone manufacturer, that could impact TSMC's revenues. We also see that their second largest customer was 12% of the revenue. So that's NVIDIA, and I don't think there's anything to be worried about with NVIDIA's revenues. I expect them to remain high for the foreseeable future, right, as currently demand is exceeding supply for their chips. It's not going to last forever. But at only 12% of TSMC's revenues, I don't see that as much of a risk, but definitely worth noting. And like I said, there are some other risks surrounding this company. So besides geopolitical risks, which are significant being a Taiwanese company, you also have things like the need to constantly innovate. So if there are ever delays or issues with the rollout of a new technology for a new semiconductor process, that could significantly impact TSMC. You also have the ongoing trade wars and tariffs, which stand to reduce demand potentially for lots of electronic devices, right? I mean, these, this news is changing all the time, so we don't truly know what the impact's going to be. But I think it could be assumed that there might be some 
decrease in demand for electronics, this could really impact TSMC's revenue. So for now, they are growing, they do have a reasonable valuation, and I really like what I see. So if I do decide to buy TSM shares, I'll definitely let my YouTube members know. I have a YouTube membership where I share all of my buys and sells with that small community. It's a great way to support the channel if you're interested in that. And one last note on the tariffs that I mentioned. We have this report from Morningstar that says that they're trimming their fair value on TSMC. However, they still call it one of their top picks for the semiconductor industry. They say that the US has begun an inquiry to determine sectoral tariffs for semiconductors and consumer electronics. That's probably not gonna be so good for TSM, right? They currently assume a 10% tariff as TSMC produces mainly in Taiwan, and Morningstar is going to review the forecasts once the rates are finalized. So even with Morningstar taking a bit of a conservative look at Taiwan Semiconductor, they believe the fair value is $262 per ADR share on the New York Stock Exchange, and shares are currently trading at $147 a share. So this implies pretty significant upside if Morningstar is to be believed. Again, these are just analysts. They don't know the future. They don't know everything. So we really want to take that with a grain of salt. I would love to know what your thoughts are on Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Do you think this is the best way to play the growth of semiconductors? Are there other companies that you might be eyeing? I would love to hear all your thoughts down below. And if you did enjoy the video, please hit the like button. It really does help out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new, please subscribe. I would love to have you as a subscriber to my channel. Thanks so much for watching the video today, and I hope you all have an amazing day.